Which one's better, the M1 brand new MacBook Air or the 16 inch Intel Core i9 MacBook Pro? That is the question we're going to answer in this video. And if you stick around to the end, then I'll tell you what I'm going to do with my 16 inch MacBook Pro. If you've been anywhere online lately, you'll likely know that Apple recently updated three of their product lines to use their new M1 processor. These are the MacBook Air, the 13 inch MacBook Pro and the Mac Mini. What you might also have seen is that the M1 processor seems to be absolutely killing it against comparisons to their previous Intel powered versions. So today I'm going to be doing a comparison that I'm really, really interested in and also one that might just sound plain stupid to do. So before we get started, if you do want to jump straight to the geeky bits, then you can follow these timestamps or click them down below. And if you're interested in more of these types of videos, then I've got a few of these coming up. One about the top spec M1 Mac mini and one around the iPad Pro and the iPad Air. So please do subscribe if you're into one of those. Anyway, getting right into this in terms of the specs. In the red corner, we have the base spec 2020 MacBook Air packing the brand new Apple Silicon M1 processor, 256 gig of storage, only eight gig of memory. And of course it's typical small, light and completely fanless design. Now this little thing weighs in at 999.99. Uh, sorry, this is 9.99, 9.99? No, sorry, this is 999 pounds, 999 dollars. Seems to be 999, wherever you go. Over in the blue corner, we have the 2020 16 inch MacBook Pro. Now this one is the base model, but with many, many upgrades. It's got the Intel Core i9 processor, 32 gigs of memory, two terabytes of storage, and the AMD Radeon Pro 5300M GPU. Now I could have spec this one slightly further up to the 5600M GPU, slightly more storage and double the memory if I wanted to, to 64 gig. And this thing, this this beast, this, this heavyweight, and I do actually mean that because it's massively heavy compared to the air, of course comes in at a huge 3699. But to make this comparison fair, let's just take away the upgraded storage cost and instead price it on the base amount of 512 gig, which is it's still more than the MacBook Air's 256 gig model, but brings the price down to 3099, which is still 2100 more expensive than the Air. But either way, you think that this thing hasn't really got a chance in hell in competing with the beast of, you know, 16 inch MacBook Pro, right? Actually, well, 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 just watch because this MacBook Air is better than the MacBook Pro in some situations. First off, I'm going to run through some various benchmark tests and some real world tests. And then at the end, I'm going to try and make sense of all these weird results and give you my perspective on what's going on. First up is Cinebench R23, um, which is basically a tool that will max out the CPU on both of these systems. And running it on both of these gives us an overall score of 6479 on the MacBook Air and 7302 on the 16 inch Pro, which basically gives the MacBook Pro a near 12% lead on the MacBook Air. Kind of what you should expect when comparing machines, which are over two grand uh, in difference, but maybe not as big of a difference as you would have thought. Now, what you can't hear and what you probably can see here is the horrendous fan noise that you always get with the 16 inch MacBook Pros. The MacBook Pro had its fans maxed out to 4,900 RPM and its CPU temperature was around 86 degrees for the majority of this test and most of the tests that we carried out. But on the MacBook Air, which doesn't have any fans, its CPU temperature was 92 degrees, but since there are no fans, it was completely silent. Now we'll also say that after picking up the Air, it was still just warm to the touch compared to the MacBook Pro being noticeably hotter. And, and with the MacBook Air, the temperature dropped down pretty quickly from, you know, from 90 degrees down to 70, then to 60 within minutes of running these tests. And then one other thing to mention here is the power consumption. In these tests, the 16 inch MacBook Pro hit over 50 watts, but this M1 Air was just 7.4 watts, which is a whopping 148% difference. So once you take into account their slight difference in performance, but compare that to a huge difference in fan noise and, and power usage. That's really quite something, just wow. Over to GFX Metal to test out the game performance and the results here are possibly as expected with the 16 inch MacBook Pro and that Radeon 5300M GPU getting 88 frames per second on one of the specific tests that we picked compared to the 70 FPS on the M1 MacBook Air. So overall a 22% difference. With Geekbench, the story is quite different where we had 1113 for single core and 6462 for multi core on the 16 inch. And on the M1, those scores were 1726 and 7568. Now, those are significant differences of 
43% on the single core and then 15% on the multi-core. Over to the GPU tests in Geekbench, we saw results from the 16 inch MacBook Pro at 47% better than the Air, which would indicate that pure graphics performance on the Pro is much better than the Air. A quick stop over to the disk read and write speeds, and these are pretty much the same between the two models, between kind of 2000 and 2700 megabytes per second, so no real differences there. And whilst all of these graphical tests are nice and, and, and everything, but I thought I'd actually try and simulate some general web browsing as well, and, and using the speedometer website to see how snappy general web browsing was on each of these, and, and again, massive differences. The 16 inch i9 MacBook Pro hit a score of 128 compared to the M1 score of 226. That's a huge 55% difference. So you will definitely 100% see much snappier general web browsing on the M1 Air compared to the i9 16 inch MacBook Pro. Now over in terms of video editing and, and exporting, I've done a few different things here. First up, I use the Bruce X benchmark, which brings in a short but fairly complex 5K sequence and, and test the export speeds. Now the 16 inch MacBook Pro took the win here with 16 seconds to complete versus the 21 on the air, which is a, about a 27% difference. I then tried exporting one of my usual YouTube videos with you know, various effects and transitions and color grades and, and all those kind of things, much like the one you're watching right now. And this gave us six minutes 30 for the MacBook Pro and nine minutes 30 for the air, a 37% difference. Again, I guess, pretty much as we kind of expected. But the last, the last test that I ran for this around editing was to grab some test footage from my Sony A7S III camera, which was at the full 4K, 10 bit, 4 to 2 and only 25 frames per second, gave us a different result of 14% where the MacBook Air was faster at exporting the footage than the 16 inch, 2000 pound more expensive MacBook Pro. So, what does all of this mean? I mean, we've kind of got a mixture of results here. For some things, the MacBook Air is noticeably quicker, but in particular, the graphic heavy work that the MacBook Pro is, and with the exception of the Sony A7S III footage that we tested, is better. So my advice here would be divided depending on what your requirements are. The key things to note here are that the MacBook Air is incredibly fast, incredibly quiet, and incredibly conservative of power. It actually comes so close to the MacBook Pro that it's kind of almost unbelievable that a machine that's over 2,000 pounds or dollars cheaper could be so close. So if you are looking to do intensive workloads on this thing and, and, and value a quiet environment, then this is actually a really, really good option. I can't tell you the number of times I've been in meetings and, and had a few things open on my Mac and been that person, you know, that guy who, who sat there with the laptop fan spinning at full speed, just going <laughs> desperately trying to see what I can do to close it down and, and keep it quiet. It can be awful at times. So if you are looking for a general all-round machine, then the Air is a fantastic option. And I would recommend to spec this with a minimum the 16 gig of memory, because I suspect this would actually fairly significantly affect many of the results where the Air actually fell short today. And well, what does this mean? What does this really mean for the 16 inch beast of a laptop? Well, it's a 16 inch screen. So for those of you needing the larger screen, well, yep, that's for you. For those of you who buy one to play games, then who am I kidding? Who buys a Mac to play games on? <laughs> for those using the Adobe Creative Cloud Suite right now, the apps are not optimized for the M1 Mac. They are horrendous. For now, until they get to update their apps to work natively instead of via Rosetta. So just for now, stick to the Intel Macs for now until they've solved that. But in general, for those content creators who are editing videos, then the 16 inch Pro will give you marginally improved performance, but again, at a cost of you know 2000 extra, I'll be honest, I struggle to see any real reasons why you wouldn't really go for the upgraded Air with, you know, with 16 gig of memory. For the price difference, you know, that's, that's huge, 2,000. That extra 2,000 can buy you a whole lot more just stuff. And also, following the recent leaks of the 2021 and the 2022 lineup of Apple's next gen processors, I think we're about to see some very, very interesting Macs about to hit the market. So if you are still really keen on the 16 inch MacBook Pro, I would just wait that little bit longer if you can because well you just don't know what's around the corner if you did like this video then please do click the like button down below and subscribe to the channel for more mac videos to come it really does help to support the channel and and gets more people to see these videos i am also patiently waiting on my top spec mac mini to be delivered so hopefully that'll be before christmas and i can just compare the mac mini to the m1 air and the 16 inch pro 
And I've also just had the new iPad Air turn up along with the iPad Pro. So stick around if you want more content and I will link to those videos here and down below when they're live. But for now, thanks for watching and I look forward to talking to you via the medium of video in the near future. Cheers, bye-bye.